What's up guys? How are you all doing? And welcome to another configuration video for the Raspberry Pi. Today we will be checking out the Google Assistant rather than the Alexa. So if those of you that enjoyed the Alexa Pi, we're going to look at the Google Pi. Stay tuned, it's coming up next right here on M.I. Sperry. Okay, guys, so what we're doing, like I said, we're going to be checking out how to configure the Google Pi, basically, since Google released its API just the same as uh, Amazon released theirs, we're going to be checking it all out and configuring it on a Raspberry Pi. So, to do that, I already have a Raspberry Pi configured with the latest version of the Raspbian image. Um, it also allows to use the noobs image so those of you who want that uh, kind of scaled down image you can use that as well so we are literally going to do this straight away i have not set this up uh originally so uh, some of you have commented and said that you like to see the like troubleshooting uh basically when i didn't you know when it doesn't work right and i have to troubleshoot it and figure out what to do a lot of you said that you like that so we're going to go ahead and check that out so here we go we're going to get into this um on google they have the way to install this SDK, and you basically go to it's. I'm just gonna literally walk right down through this, so you're gonna see me looking to the side here and there and checking my different monitors. So, anyway, if this sounds interesting to you, fasten your seatbelt because here we go. All right, I have clicked that first link, okay? Go to the project page. So, let's look at the project page. All right, so it tells me. I have to create a new project, all right? So the only thing I can see here is maybe we need to do the using Google APIs. No, oh, using Google API? Sure, why not? I heard it. So using Google API, this says, the Google Cloud Platform uses projects to manage resources. Create one below. Well, oogie boogie, we're gonna call it Google Pi. Your new project ID shall be Google Pi, as long as it figures itself out. What, can there not be any, any other projects called that? Maybe I should have called it the Googie Pi. Come on. Come on. Well, this is taking a while. Ah, there we are. Encoded net 1703118. Now, I may take and delete some of the, uh, if there's any proprietary stuff that is just for me, I may try to block that out. But I don't know. It's not like you guys going to hack it because the minute I'm done with this video, I'm going to turn it off. So, in any case, create. All right, now what? Well, I guess I could have created an empty project. Enable and manage. Well, what if I... No. So you, oh, what happened? Okay, that sounds like somebody came in from the garage. Uh, let's see, where was I? What happened? Mm. All right, so let's go back to configure. So once you've created that, select an existing project, create a new project. Okay, enable the Google Assistant API on the project you selected. All right, well, enable that jazz. Ooh, no, I don't want to go off that screen. Ah, come back here. So let's look at how to enable it. It says using credentials with API, accessing user data with the uh, OAuth 2.0. You can use access. Uh, you can access user data with this API on the credentials page. Create an OAuth 2.0 client ID. A client ID uh, requests user content so that your app your app can access user data. Include that I client ID when making your API call to Google. Okay, so this seems like the uh, ARN numbers or ASN number, whatever that was, that's for um, the Alexa, basically. This basically ties your device to your project. So then there's also server-to-server -server interaction. All right, I'm just going to push enable. Enable. Enabling. Bam. Enable. To use this API, you may need credentials. Uh, click Create Credential to get started. Well, fantastic. Let's see, where's the Create Credential? Create Credential. Fire that jazz up. Find out what kind of credentials you need. 
will help you set up the correct credentials. If you wish, you can skip the step and create an API key, client ID, or service account. I'm not real sure. What does this say to do? Create an auth ID. Ah, you may need to set a product name for your product consent screen on the OAuth consent screen tab. Give the product a name and click save. Click other to give the client ID a name. Click create. A dialog box appears and shows you the client ID and secret. No need to remember or save this. Just close the dialog. Well, hoopity doopity. Click the down arrow at the far right of the screen for the ID. Download the client secret JSON file. Ooh, Java. Hmm. Copy the client ID.json file from your development machine to your device. Okay. Do not run. Now, note, do not run. And I like how not's bolded. Do not run the following command in an SSH session connected to the Raspberry Pi. This command transfers the JSON file from a directory on your development machine to the directory. An SSH session cannot access your local directories. Or can it? I think we'll just fire up WinSCP and be done with it. A new terminal will run the following command. SCP, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so we'll just WinSCP that on over there. Looks like they're putting it in the Raspberry Pi. Pi IP address. Oh, 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 I see what they're saying. Uh, they're just putting it in the home directory. Okay. Mm All right, so that seems like we just need to create these credentials. Um... Google Assistant API. Yes, I want the Google Assistant API. Uh, where will you be calling the API from? From the world. Okay, web browser? No. Observer? No. Android, iOS, Chrome application, PlayStation. Ooh, you can call it from the PlayStation? Well. Other, ooh, I don't know. What do I choose here? What do I choose here? I'm confused. Should I do client ID? Configure consent screen. To create an OAuth client ID, you must first set a product name on the content screen. Uh, okay, I think this sounds like the better way to go. Let's go client ID. Why not? Mm. Client ID, credentials, OAuth. There's my email, product name shown to users. Shown to users. How many of you are Tron fans? The user. The user. Sorry, I like saying that. All right, so I'm going to call it, we'll just call it Google Pie. Woo! Okay, homepage URL. No, we don't have one. Product logo. <laughs> I can create my own logo, eh? Okay, policy. Okay, privacy policy. Optional. No, I don't care. Terms of service. Don't care. Uh, sure. We detected a problem with your product name shown in the user field. Make sure it describes your product, uh, your specific product, and avoid using a name that suggests that your product comes from Google or any other company. Well, fine. We'll call it the Raz. I don't know. What should we call it? Um, the Raz Pie. No, 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 no. We're not gonna, not gonna call it that. Let's call it the, the Raz. Assistant, Raz assistant. That's right. Save it. Bam. So application type is it a web application? Is it an Android? Is it Chrome? Is it iOS? PlayStation? Other. I don't know. What should we do? Click other. Oh, here we go. Click other. Helps if you read the instructions. RTFM. Azal. All right, what do we say here? Click other and give the client ID a name. Well, dadgum, we've given it so many names. So many names. So Raz Pi ID. Sure, Raz Pi ID. Great. Bam. So we've got OAuth client. Here is your client ID. Here is your client secret. Okay, so I'll probably blur that out. Okay. So click create, a dialog box shows you client ID. Blah, blah, blah. No need to remember this, just oh, wait. no need to remember or save this. Just close the dialog. Well, I'm going to go close the dialogs, but I'm going to close it over here where you guys can't see it. So that way I don't have to blur it out twice in post production because that sucks. Oh, and then it gives you the client ID. Well, fantastic. Well, I may have to blur it out multiple times. It's fine. 
any case, or I mean, just get bored and not blurred out at all and don't care. Anyway, um, so you click the down arrow at the right of the screen for your client ID to download the client secret JSON. Ooh, it's the secret JSON. Oh, not that. And there's a download button. Boop. And skadooshy. All right, looks like that is that is now downloaded. So now what's next? So we get that. Copy this secret file. The secret file. We have to copy it to your development machine. Well, hootie, hootie doody. So it's, we got to copy this around. All right. Win SCP to Zerestki. Oh my, that was loud. Oh, you guys didn't hear that. I had a, I had a, like a notification pop up and it made the bling bling. And at least, at least I think, I believe it's muted. Well, hopefully it's muted. If it's not muted, it is now. So, anyway, I'll mute that for you guys so you guys don't listen to my computer beeping. All right, so let's go to... I think I think this is 48. Is what this is. Right. Wait, no. Bye. Let's see if it'll do it. Update. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did it. Home pie. All right, so now i got to go find where this put this, I believe... Where did I put this? I don't even know. Uh, backup, backup. YouTube channel, Projectoros, Raspberry Pods, a good, good pie. There it is. So, theoretically, we just dump this here. Seems simple enough. All right. Once we have done that, close terminal window. Well... Save activity controls on your account. In order to use the Google Assistant, you must share certain activity data with Google. The Google Assistant needs this data to properly function. Well, does it now? All right. So then, uh, this is not a specific to the. This is not specific to the SDK. Okay. Open the activity controls page for the Google account that you want to use with this assistant. You can use any Google account. It does not need to be your developer account. Okay. Ensure the following toggle switches are enabled in blue. All right. So we got to figure out, we got to open this activity controls page. So we got to make sure and save all this crap. All right. Is it all saved? Hell, I don't know. Sure. Sure. It's saved. Yay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to close this and then we're going to launch it from here because we can. Activity controls. All right. So activity controls, web activity, include. Okay. So now we got to figure out what we got to do. So ensure the following toggle switches are enabled in blue. Web and app activity, location history, device information, and voice and audio activity. All right. So let's look here. So location history, web app, location history, device information, voice and audio, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube search history, web. Well, it seems like everything's enabled. So now what? Okay, configure developer for a little bit. Configure and test the audio. So I guess that's the next one on the page. So verify the recording and playback work. Okay. So we have to make sure ASL, uh, ALSA is backing, which I'm pretty sure it is, but we'll give it a shot. Let me get, let me grab my speaker. Give me just a minute. Okay, guys, I have installed the speaker. Ooh, in fact, let's see if I can, I'll turn this on so you guys can see it. I forgot to turn it on, so you'll have to forgive me for a split second. Hopefully I've got it under there where, well, if I can open up the camera aperture. All right, there we go. Uh, let's switch so you can see. Zaratas, hey, that worked out really well. All right, so there's my little speaker. That's that one that I keep using that, anyway. Hooray, there we go. So that's what I got going on. I'm going to go back to just the face cam so it doesn't take up everything. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to slide this off to the other monitor. Sorry, you guys won't be able to see it, but I need to be able to type. So we're supposed to do speaker test dash T wave. Of course, now the problem that might be Problem that might be happening right now, the reason it's not doing it is because the speaker may not be charged, which is a problem. All right. Be right back. I'm going to charge this. So I will be just a second, and then we will come back. Okay, so I'm back. So I didn't... Um 
I didn't exactly charge it a whole lot, but I think maybe what the problem was was it was in the wrong uh, config. It might have been going out the HDMI port. So to fix that, you do you do a sudo raspi. Oops. Yeah, raspi config. I got a cough. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. I had a cough. So we go into that. Of course, it helps if I type sudo correctly. Sudo. And then you're going to go down here to advanced options. Go to audio. And then you're going to select force 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. If that's the jack that you are using. All right. So now we can run our test. Speaker test. And you guys probably hear it. I don't know if you can hear that. Anyway, but it's saying front left is what it's saying. So it does vuck. So there's that. So I'm going to check back our deal. We're going to check the recording. So I'm going to do an A record format equals S16 underscore LE duration equals 5. Rate equals 16K. Man, they set up all of this stuff. File type equals raw out dot raw Pfft. all right this is what i'm gonna do i am going to cut and paste cut and paste and oh dang it copy and paste it all right there we go Beep. Audio player. no such file or directory well no joke i want you to make it why is it giving me that? You know what? I'm going to forge ahead and consider that it's probably working. Because uh, last time I installed the Raspberry Pi image from scratch, um, I just plugged in the USB mic and it just worked. So I'm going to assume that it is all working. However, I am going to check out what the, uh, what the volume level is on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to F6. We're going to go down to the USB PNP sound device. And then we will go over to there. Oh, there it is. There we go. Let's. I'm not going to blast it, but let's put it to about there. All I did was use the arrow keys. I pressed F6. Oh, sorry. I'm probably going to show you that. Pressed F6 to get to the USB sound device. And then I just used tab to tab through it all to play back and capture and yada, yada, yada. So I went to capture and just used my arrow keys to um, increase the volume level. Um, or basically the gain on the mic. So that's it. So now I'm going to hit the escape key to get out of there. Boop. So that should all be saved now. So just making sure that that microphone can actually hear me. So now it tells me that I have to find your recording and playback device. Uh, no, not really. Um, if your recording playback is working, then you're done configuring the audio. All right. So where I'm at on this is I'm here. It gives you more steps to show you how to configure it if you have problems. Um, I don't think I've probably got any problems, so I'm going to download the library and run the sample. Oh, we're getting close now, folks. All right, so we're going to configure the new Python virtual environment. Hmm. So first things first, we have to isolate the SDK, and it depends. Okay, use a Python virtual environment to isolate the SDK and its dependencies from the system Python packets. Hmm. All right, so let's do that. So we're going to run these commands. Hopefully you saw them. I'm going to run them. So sudo uh, apt get update. Make sure and update everything. And yeah, it looks like my wife is screaming down the staircase. Fantastic. So anyway. Um, anyway, so we're going to let this uh, do its updatey thing. Uh, once it gets there, we're almost there. So I may end up pausing. And just like that, with the miracle of time, it has done its updating. So we're going to do a sudo, ooh, sudo, uh, apt, uh, get, install, python3, dev, as well as the python3 virtual environment. Bam. So this will go ahead and install. I'm going to say yes. And hopefully this installs quickly. I may have to pause. Maybe. But basically, this is going to install that virtual environment, install all that stuff and everything. And then we'll go ahead and create the uh, virtual environment based on their notes. I'm just following this verbatim. So 
Oh, looks like we're done. So now we're going to do a Python 3-M V-E-N-V E-N-V. Okay, it's probably going to build the virtual environment. Sure, off we go. There we go. So now we're going to go ENV bin python dash m picture and picture, I guess. Maybe pip. Pip. Who's pip? Pip. 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 Chat here. Anyway, install upgrade pip setup. Whoops. Tools. All right. So I have absolutely no idea what that does. I'm going to guess that it updates the environment, gives me maybe some cool tools. Pip sounds like maybe like picture in picture, maybe? I don't know. Installing object package pip. Anyway, all right. I'm just following. I'm blindly following the Google overlords. So now we're going to, uh, looks like we're going to set up our environment. So we're going to source uh, env bin activate. Oops. Ah. Magnificent. So that's probably like we used to do when we would do the sudo switch user uh, dash s slash you know user bin or bin bash whatever when we did that for the home assistant. It seems like they're they're doing the same thing, keeping those keeping that separate. So no, it has a note here. The Google Assistant library currently runs only on Python 3.x. Oh, all right. Well, cool. Well, I'm glad that we installed that. So we got that. So we get library and sample card. So now what? So the Google Assistant SDK package contains all the code required to get the Google Assistant running on a Raspberry Pi. Well, isn't that good to know? Including the library and some sample code. Use pip to install the latest version of the Python package in the environment in the virtual environment. So we're going to do a Python pip. Oh, okay. So pip is kind of like a uh, kind of like a repository install. Mm -hmm. So we're going to run that command. So let's go over here and we're going to say python-m pip install upgrade google assistant library so my question is i wonder if you can just do oops i hit the mic my bad i wonder if you can do this type of an install thing and it um uh, it just upgrade it because i know that was a question we had on the alexa pi was how do you upgrade your alexa pi um and for all i could see is you just run that uh, one script again and just reinstall the whole thing basically anyway so um hopefully that's kind of how this works you just run this this upgrade google assistant and it just does it that would be awesome all right so now that we're done with that we're moved down to run sample once you have verified that everything is configured correctly you can run the sample on your de development machine open a browser and sign into the google account you want to use to send queries to the Google Assistant. This can be any of your Google accounts, not just your developer account. Just make sure that you set activity controls for the account. Well, looks like we're going to go ahead and do that. Say activities for controls. Oh, that's that web activities. Oh, okay. Well, or my account already has it. See, right there. Bam. All right, good, good deal. Oh, crap. Where are we at? All right, there we go. Authorize the Google Assistant SDK uh, samples to make Google Assistant queries for the given Google account. Reference the JSON file you copied over to the device in a previous step. Oh, yes. So we're going to do this goop right here. So I'm going to move this off so we can we can type it in. So we're going to do uh, python-m pip install upgrade of the Google auth o auth lib ooh i wonder if i've typed this i am Duel. let's see what what happens if i do that it's either going to give me an error or it's just going to work nope that's right you do the brackets okay all right so that's going to do that and then i've got another one i have to run the tool which this is a humongous humongous command wow that's a big command so we're just going to copy that we're going to copy and paste that i'm going to try typing that all in knowing my humanness i'm gonna oh okay see here let me show you what i'm talking about it's basically this command right here this is where we put on our json file um it looks like it goes in right there or somewhere around in there so let's try all right so we're going to try to copy that this over past it 
Okay, looks like looks like it worked. All right, so now I got to back up and I got to change that to my JSON file. Oh no! Oh no! We're gonna have to delete that because I'm gonna have to copy and paste the uh, JSON file as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prepare this in like Notepad since that's such a gigantic command. Boom! So we're gonna put that there and then hold on. Let me get list out uh, LL home. Pi, list that out and see what happens. No, we can't do that. Why can't we do that? All right, let's look. Oh, LL, LL, I didn't activate LL. Ah! Those of you who are probably looking at me going, you are dumb. I am just a goof. I am such a goof. Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. Home pie. There it is. Wait, no. No, there it isn't. Oh, yeah, that, that it is. Holy crap, that's huge. Whee. Well, it is. That's, that's gigantor. All right, well, anyway. Either way, who am I to judge? All right, we're going to copy that. Oh, well, looks like it already copied it. I'm going to delete that. Mm. Excuse me for my bumblery. Excuse me for my bumblery. All right, here we go. So let's go ahead and we will replace this piece with that gigantic thing except I don't need to have a return oh no it's word wrapping okay okay so we need to copy all of this goop and crud I can't believe I just did that no not cut it mm. I swear my fingers and my brain aren't lining up okay so there's the Google auth to a bowl block go Let's see what happens enter authorization code <laughs> What's the authorization code? You didn't tell me about an authorization code! It should display... Okay, hold on. Read the instructions. It should it should display as shown below. Copy the URL and paste it into the browser. This can be done with blah, 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 blah. Development machine or any other machine. After you approve, a code will appear in your browser, such as... Blah. Copy this and paste it into your terminal. Ah... Uh, 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 okay, please visit this URL. Let's just do that. All right, so there's the... We're going to throw it over here. We're going to paste that sucker in and hit go. Choose an account. Me. Bird access to your Google account. Yes, I'm going to allow it. Do it. All right, so there's my thing I have to copy. So copy that jazz. And then we're going to go stoink and poink. Credential saved. Well, good to know. All right, so now that we've done that, it should display the OAuth credential. Blah, blah, blah. Start the Google Assistant SDA sample. So Google Assistant dash demo. Say, OK, Google, and hey, Google, followed by your query. Oh, or, I thought it said and. I was like, well, that's stupid. You have to say, okay, Google, and hey, Google. Good Lord. Okay, the assistant will respond. The assistant does not respond. Then you don't know, do this crap to figure it out. All right, so that seems to be all you have to do to set it up. So I'm going to go ahead and let's uh, turn this guy on see what happens. So Google-assistant demo. I wonder what this is a demo. Maybe you can literally customize everything. We'll just have to see how to how to do it. You're ready to start your own project. Oh, okay, cool. And then it shows how to start your own project. I think we'll end this video with just getting it to work. Okay, so here we go. Google Assistant Demo. Go, baby, go. It's doing its thing. It's doing its thing. Except it had an error. On Assistant Error. Input Error. On Assistant Error. What is fatal? True. What? Start, finish. On Assistant Error. It's fatal. True. Okay, Google. I think it was fatal. What happens when you have a fatal thing? Audio input processor. Input error. Ah! Ah! Wait. On muted changed. Is muted false? Yeah. On start finish. On start error. Is fatal equals true. Error. Audio input processor. Input error on assistant error. Hmm. Maybe. You know what? Since we're using Google... Let's just use Google. Let's Google it. I'm going to Google it. 
And we'll see what it says. Oh, heavens. Well, that's not right. Google Assistant. Err. What's the err that I'm seeing? You can't receive audio input. Mm. I found a Raspberry Forum post. And somebody said, do you have any audio input devices? Yes, yes they do. I just fixed it yesterday. I found the fix on Android Authority, and it works, so I am starting to take a case where the Raspberry Pi and the webcam microphone will be in. I already made a one case, but it's not the best. What is this guy talking about? I'm reading a forum post, by the way. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I say we just try it again. A-L-S-A Mixer. So my question is, does it find it or does it not? So here is the USB sound do funny. That's the audio gain. Here's the actual mic, the capture device. And it's on. Oh! You know what? I think I just I just remembered. Remember there's a little trick. I'm going to have to VNC to do this. Let me get my VNC going. Get my VNC on. Log in here, and then I'll drag it over so you guys can see it. All right. In the configuration, sometimes you have to actually activate it. You have to go up here and go boop. You have to go boop. And then, I don't know if it's an error. No, it's an audio devices. We have to go in here and you have to actually turn it on. So you have to go in here, well, if it'll let me, USB, and you have to say set controls. You have to say microphone. Sure, audio gain, why not? Close. But there it is, and you have to hit OK, and then it finally starts working. So let's give that a shot. Where are we at? Google Assistant Demo, go. OK, Google. Yeah, it still is telling me. So, hmm, sorry, I keep hitting the microphone. The microphone sits like right where my, right where my hands are. And I can't get it to, yeah. Okay, so if that's that, and I do, well, what what if I set controls on this guy? PCM, do it. Okie dokie, Smokey. Maybe I need to reboot. Rebooting solves everything. Well, not everything, but it solves a few things. So let's see what happens. Error in processor. Basically, it's telling me I reject your reality and substitute my own. All right. Well, fine. I will reboot you then. So I'm going to exit out of this. For oh! All right. Well, here. I'll do it from here. <laughs> Shut down. Reboot. Okay. No, no. No, don't try to reconnect. No, just stop it. Stop it. You. All right, fine. You can just sit there and do that. I am going to get everything set back up to log back in. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do my cool little ping thing. So we're going to do a ping dash T. Oh, it looks like it already came back up. Did it already come back up? Man, these things are fast. I'm, I'm impressed. So close that. Get that out of my way. Your Raspberry system has been upgraded to the latest version. Well, has it now? Yes, I know I'm still using the same SSH, whatever it is. Fine with me. All right. Um, I need to open up a term inimitable. So term inimitable. All right. I wonder if I have to get into that in virtual environment. How do we do that? Hmm. So I got to look at how we got into that virtual environment. It again. So... Nope. Nope. Ah, that's right. We sourced source env bin activate. Ah, isn't that nice? Isn't that very nice? Very nice, very nice. All right, so now let's go ahead and run our Google Assistant demo command. Google Assistant Oop. demo. Come on, come on, come on. And we still get errors. Audio input processor error. Why? Why, why, why? Well, maybe maybe that one test really was a true test. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to test that again. Let's do the audio record and see if it 
course, it keeps saying that it can't find the file or whatever. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Yeah, but no such file or directory. He? Huh? Maybe I have to do like home pi. Oh, uh, okay. I'm going to pause for a second because I have to go look something up and then I'll be right back. I promise I won't do anything uh, in between to solve anything. I'm just going to pause and come back. Okay, guys, so it looks like I tried a different uh, A record command and I'm getting an unknown PCM. Uh, your input device, uh, A record, blah, 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 has problems or something like that. So um, I may try, oh, actually, maybe it's because. Now, so I'm wondering, I'm going to go ahead and go back to that audio section, uh, troubleshooting audio section, and we're going to see uh, what. Uh, what it's telling us to do to troubleshoot this on out. So we're going to do an A record dash L. See if it tells us. Let's capture hardware devices. Card one device, USB PNP sound device. Okay, that should be correct. And then it says create a new file or note the card number and device number in the playback. A play dash L. So our card is zero. Subdevices is one one. Okay. Subdevice is zero. Subdevice one card one. So this one's card zero, and the other one is card one. Okay. Alright, so then we want to create a new file in the home directory. So we're gonna create VI the dot A sound RC. Okay. And inside this file. We want, for a microphone and speaker, we want to put all of this goop in there. I'm just cutting and pasting from that screen that we had. So, PCM default. A blah, 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 blah. Okay. And make sure you have the right slave definitions. So, we have playback, PCM speaker. Mm -hmm. Capture, PCM mic, speaker. Mic is the slave, PCM. And we have to put our card number. Let's see, do we remember what that was? So card zero is the speaker. Card one is the mic. So mic needs to be the card one. So hardware. Let's get rid of this. One. Oops. Helps if I type the one. Device number. What is the device number? Card. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, sub device. Zero. Okay. Oh, they're both they're both zero. Oh, okay. So okay. Okay. So we're doing one comma zeros here. Delete, 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 delete. Place that with a zero. Same with this. We are, except this card number is zero. And its device number is zero. All right. I can right quit that. If you have both HDMI monitor and three and a half speakers connected, you can play the audio through either one. Run the following command. All right, so go to the advanced options audio and select the desired output device. I have a feeling they're talking about here. Or no, 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 I take it back. That's if you need to change it up. We already changed it up. We sent it to a three and a half, three and a half millimeter jack, so we're good. Repeat step one to verify recording and playback. If this is not working, check the microphone and speaker are properly connected. If this is not the issue, then try a different microphone or speaker. Sounds sounds reasonable. <clears throat> All right, so let's go. Hey, record. Ah, it looks like it's recording me. Blah, 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 blah. I think there's like an A play. A play. Uh, what do we call it? <laughs> what did we name that? Out. Well, the good news is, is that it actually worked. So, um, dead gum. remove the out. All right. So we did have to add that code. At least on mine, I did. Maybe you'll have better luck. But either way, um, I want to go back and get that. Can oh, let's see. I think it was just Google Assistant demo, right? Google uh, Assistant and demo. Shabuski. I don't see an error. That must have been the whole problem. It couldn't figure out what the card was. All right, let's let's try this out. Let's take a sugar first, man. Okay, Google. What time is it? Hey. 
Hey, Google. What time is it? Oh, there we go. It was just really low. Oh, that was really low. Let's let's crank it. Let's crank it to 11. So preferences, audio devices. Fire that to the top, man. Hey, Google. What time is it? The time is 2.28 p.m. I tell you one thing that I do not like is... It does work, but you don't get any indication unless maybe, maybe, hold on, let me take one of my, my earphones out. You don't get any indication. Like it doesn't do a boom or, or give you a tone to let you know that it's listening. Hey, Google. What time is it? The time is 2.28 p.m. I mean, you know, that's awesome, but at the same time, I like to know that it's listening to me. Hey, Google, what time is it? The time is 2.28 p.m. Well, I guess that's kind of cool. You can phrase it into a complete phrase. Well, I guess maybe that is a little bit better. I guess I guess you could you just do it in a whole phrase instead of you know doing like you know like when you say Alexa and then you kind of got to wait until she's listening. I guess with this one you can just say the entire phrase and you know once she's listening then you know you're good to go. Um, or or if she doesn't respond at all then maybe she didn't hear you. You can just say it again. So maybe that's. I don't. I don't know. There's some pros and cons. I don't know. I'm gonna have to just play with it to see what's going on. Uh, let's let's try something more complicated. Um, what's happening right now? Um, in stuff. Um, oh, I know. Let's let's check the weather. Hey Google, what's the weather like today? In Andover today, it'll be cloudy with a forecasted high of 89 and a low of 71. Right now, it's 86 and partly cloudy. <laughs> I'm actually kind of impressed. That actually picked up that whole. And if you see in the scrolling text here, you see that it's actually um, telling me what uh, what text it's actually recognizing uh, when I'm saying stuff. So that's that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Well, I'm not gonna lie. That's actually pretty neat. Well, anyway, guys, I have taken up enough time because this has lasted for a long time. Uh, let's see what, how long is this? Ooh, yeah, this is getting long. So, guys. Thank you very much for watching. That is basically how you set up your uh, Google Assistant on your Raspberry Pi. That was pretty darn straightforward. I mean, you watched me fumble along through it, but I did. I did eventually get it figured out. Check out that your audio device thing. That is that's definitely a way to uh, do that. Um, follow those steps and create your own uh, ASL ALSA. RC file so that way it knows where the hardware devices are if you get that error so that I hope you guys like that um, I don't know let me know if you enjoy watching that or if that's just like literally like rips your brain out of your head to watch me fumble along would you rather that be cut out or would you rather that be left in throw that in the comments so that way I know I'm gonna try leaving it in this time just so you guys can give me an opinion on it uh, if you want to see me do stuff off the cuff like this where I just I just fire it up and it's not a whole planned out drawn out exactamundo thing so just let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below uh, whether you enjoyed it or not give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you please and please remember to like subscribe and share the videos it definitely helps the channel it helps me be able to afford different things and buy more stuff and create more things and it really gets me motivated uh, to put all this stuff together when um, my videos are really getting circulated and everybody's really watching them and enjoying them so definitely do that um, check me out on Twitter and instruct I definitely tweet out a lot of different things. Um, I'm, so there's some days where I'm more social than other days. It just depends. <laughs> depends on how my time goes if I have time to do it. But anyway, definitely check me out there because I can send you guys updates uh, without having to go through building a whole video and everything. I know I've said that before. I'm like a broken record. I know. But anyway, check me out there. Check out t-shirts if you wanna if you wanna support the channel that way. You can check out some t-shirts. Go to zazzle.com slash mi sperry. I am there. Uh, you guys can check me out there and download different things. I will also be posting some stuff on Tindy at some point. I'll let you guys know when that's coming out. So guys, before this gets just ragingly long, take care. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time.